Thank you, Eduardo, for uh, the kind invitation. And of course, uh, thank you for uh, the co-colleagues uh, on, on the panel. Uh, and I wish to thank you all for taking the time uh, to come here and uh, leave this uh, great weather outside in, uh, in Madrid and come to this uh, closed room. I'll uh, try to, um, to tell you a little bit about how we uh, see what's happening in Egypt, uh, mainly to, to tell you that uh, this complex story that is happening uh, does not and uh, should not be perceived as a story that went wrong rather than it's, uh, it's a story of a transition that is always complicated and uh, a road that has its bumps and uh, those bumps should not discourage us from, uh, from continuing it and from continue viewing it as, uh, as a transition towards democracy and a people who are uh, uh, reclaiming uh, their rights and, and, and their freedoms and, and their hopes for, for the future. Um, I am sure everybody, uh, myself, people in Egypt most of all, but also uh, across the world, when, when they recall those days in, in Tahrir with, uh, with the Egyptians coming together, all uh, types of Egyptians coming together uh, in, in a very peaceful uh, and, uh, and emotional way uh, to determine uh, their future, uh, and compare it to those uh, complicated moments we're going through now, uh, are, um, are feeling that maybe Egypt has lost its road, that uh, this, has, has, uh, this nice uh, Arab uh, spring uh, in Egypt uh, has become a cold winter uh, or a very hot uh, desert summer. Uh, what I will try is to show you that uh, this is a very um, um, uh, distorted view of the, of the real picture and that, um, uh, that this is part of a big, big process uh, uh, that uh, some of, of the bumps we're going through are necessary uh, means to reach the end uh, we all hope to have. I think the word spring played a role in this confusion because uh, spring is a fragile, gentle, and, uh, and uh, soft process, um, a moment that, uh, that passes and uh, uh, possibly is not viewed as strong enough to withstand difficulties. But what's happening in, in, in our countries, in Egypt uh, certainly, is not uh, uh, that kind of season. It's, uh, it's a big change in a big country with uh, almost 90 million citizens, with a long history and a complex culture, and uh, quite a few domestic and uh, external challenges. So it shouldn't look like a spring even when things are getting better. Um, what is happening in Egypt has been happening in the last two and a half years and will continue to happen uh, in the uh, coming months and maybe a couple of years. Um, it's not just what you had to go through here in Spain, building the constitution and the institutions of a, of a democracy. Uh, that, that's certainly uh, happening, uh, sometimes correctly, sometimes uh, with flaws that need to be corrected. But at the same time, the basic foundations of of a democracy are being uh, uh, developed and the, and the consensus on what, what the, what's the meaning of democracy is, is being developed. And, and this is an important process, more, more historic, more fundamental process that cannot just be negotiated. It, it, societies evolve into, 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 the, into answering them. Uh, I think questions, big questions like, what exactly would be the role of religion in politics? What kind of relationship between politicians and, and the political uh, uh, rulers and the uh, state institutions, the civilian state institutions, the security state institutions. Those are complex questions that societies uh, answer uh, in an evolutionary process, in a, in a, um, in a trial and error uh, process. Uh, uh, so this is what's happening in Egypt and maybe at one point uh, what, what, what happened in Egypt that we might have went a little bit uh, faster in building the institutions and writing the constitution without really being sure that we reach the consensus on some of those questions. And uh, in particular, I have in mind the, the role of religion in, in politics. So, so we might have been a bit hasty in, in building uh, some of the, uh, of the uh, building blocks of, of a democracy before answering the fundamental questions. Um, I think 
the problem of the past year of, uh, of the rule of uh, former President uh, Mohamed Morsi and, and, um, and the Muslim brothers uh, was not just that they managed the, the, the process wrongly, they did, uh, in my view at least, but, but that they thought they are entitled to construct e Egypt in such a way that is consistent with what they believe and that democracy meant elections and when you win elections you have the right to design the, the, the state and, and determine its future. Um, so the basic challenge we're going through is not about who governs Egypt, but, but, but most probably how should Egypt be governed. Of course, in politics there is always this competition, sometimes quite heated competition on who governs. But I think the more fundamental problem we, we, we're having, we had in Egypt, the more fundamental challenge we had in Egypt was how Egypt should be governed rather than who governs it. Um, a fact that sometimes uh, is, uh, is overlooked by, by many observers is that the Muslim Brothers never won a majority uh, after the, nine, uh, the 2011 revolution. They always won a big minority. They, became, they came out the biggest party, but never commanded a majority. Uh, the only way they, they were able to have a majority was uh, by having an alliance and choosing their allies that would broaden their uh, base of support. Uh, that was in the parliamentary elections or in the presidential elections when uh, 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 former President uh, Morsi realized that unless he can get all the more conservative votes from the Salafis and the Salafi parties, but also a significant chunk of the leftists and the liberals, he might not be able to make it uh, uh, to, to become president in the second round of voting when there, when there were only two candidates, uh, former President Morsi along uh, with, uh, with the, the former uh, Prime Minister, uh, uh, General Shafi. So they never had a majority. However, they acted as if they had, they thought that they got confirmation that they had a permanent majority, that this is the, the choice, the, the people choosing them meant that people chose the way of Islam. Um, that's, that mainly is why things started to get complicated. Uh, uh, not just that they were allowed to run the country for, uh, for a term, uh, a presidential term, which is five years, but to to design Egypt. And this is something that they even said in, in the rhetoric, their leaders uh, kept saying that this is the people's choice. Egyptians will choose Islam any, anytime they have the chance. Uh, I think they believed it and I think they miscalculated and, and thought that uh, the vote they got was, a, was, a, was a, a vote of principle rather than a pragmatic vote. Um, and, and I think they were wrong. Um, the turning point because when, when uh, former President Morsi was elected, uh, I'm sure there were those who were very angry and, they, uh, and those who did not want to accept this fact. But the majority of Egyptians actually accepted it, uh, including those who decided to cooperate with him despite having voted against him or not voted at all. Uh, many of them uh, decided to accept it all the political leaders uh, uh, of the opposition uh, were open to cooperate, to, to talk, and uh, to, to, to listen. Uh, until a turning point came, uh, all of a sudden, because it came r r immediately after a sequence of meetings he had with the, the key uh, opposition figures, trying to, uh, supposedly, trying to build a consensus on, uh, on how to approach the Constitution after having promised uh, explicitly, uh, I mean, af after President uh, Morsi having promised explicitly that no he will not present a constitution for a referendum unless it has a consensus. He said it in no uncertain terms. And all of a sudden, on the 22nd of, of November of 2012, he issued a constitutional declaration because Egypt did not have a constitution yet. He issued a constitutional uh, 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 decree putting his decisions and all the laws he would pass because he had the legislative power uh, beyond um, 
judicial review so he can issue a, a decree and nobody can challenge it in a court if, uh, if it contravenes the Constitution, uh, firing the uh, 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 Attorney General and appointing somebody who turned out to be fairly loyal to him and, um, and uh, protecting the Constitutional Assembly from the legal challenges that were, were launched against it. Those measures which indicated a desire to, to prevent any challenge to the course of, of, of action and policy and on the, of the Constitution uh, writing process was cause for very serious concern uh, among the, the opposition and segments of society that are yet to be determined at the time were yet to be determined. Uh, but, but resulted immediately in two important developments, the formation of a front bringing together all opposition parties, uh, all opposition non-Islamist parties because by the time the main Salafi party moved to the opposition but did not join this camp. And the second result was the, 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 uh, the uh, people coming out in hundreds of thousands in demonstrations, uh, this time close to the presidential palace uh, as well as Tahrir, uh, expressing their anger. Um, many of us thought that this is, of course, the Cairo uh, uh, community, which, is, which has not it was not known to be very uh, friendly to the Muslim Brothers. As significant as it might be, uh, there, there is still a majority of support. But the pro, the, this, this wave of demonstrations and, and, and uh, opposition uh, started at this moment. The, the second uh, 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 mistake after this constitutional decree was uh, when the president felt that uh, those demonstrators, uh, the, the president and, and the Muslim Brothers, did not like those demonstrations uh, that much. And they thought the police is not doing enough to stop them. Uh, a, a big contingent of uh, Muslim Brothers came to the location and attacked those uh, uh, demonstrators who sat, who, who sat in, who, 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 who had camped next to the presidential palace, and physically beat beat them. Uh, at the same time, the vice president publicly in a press conference, exactly the same time when this attack was happen happening, said either uh, the demonstrators accept uh, the president's authority or um, it will be the survival for the strongest. This will be the rule in Egypt, the survival for the strongest. And this was a, was a worrying signal to, m to many that, uh, that, they, p that they resort to, to force is going to be part of the political game. Um, then the, th the third uh, uh, big mistake was the writing of the Constitution. And the Constitution uh, that was written was 80%, maybe 80% in my view, a, a good document. But, but there were things that were quite problematic to most of the, uh, the political actors. And, and I would say many of those who took a, a more neutral position in analyzing what the, the Constitution contained. But there were key elements that were particularly problematic, which, which was the elaboration on what the meaning of uh, Sharia is, because our previous constitutions said that Sharia would be the main source of legislation. But that was narrowly defined to specific elements of Sharia. In the Constitution, they entered language that defined Sharia very broadly and uh, made it very easy to, uh, to, to use to um, overrule what legislation would do, what uh, the legislature would do, and uh, subject uh, parliament will to uh, the, the, the broad, very broad uh, content of, uh, of Sharia. The fourth problem, and that affected people, uh, normal people working, people working in, the, in the civil administration, uh, of course the senior, but also the, the regular folks, and, uh, and uh, frustrated the opposition parties, and particularly frustrated the Salafis, was trying to implant Muslim Brothers loyalists and members of the, of the organization 
in key government positions in the ministries and in the governorates in such a way that made people start to fear that uh, the Muslim brothers are, are trying to control the state apparatus in such a way that will make it increasingly difficult to, to have a, a, a real uh, alteration of, of power as a result of elections by being able to manipulate the political process in the old ways because that was the old way. The old way was the government didn't have to uh, rig the ballots, not necessarily rig the ballots, they did that of course, but, uh, but they used even more subtle ways long before in trying to manipulate the process and have the, the right results from their point of view. Uh, and this worried people, and uh, worried people for their livelihood, those who worked in those institutions, but worried those who thought that uh, this would preempt uh, the emergence of a real democracy and might make the idea of elections just uh, an, an uh, exercise in absurdity. The, the further uh, mistake they made was, uh, was trying to um, introduce legislation using the upper house in which they had a majority, which was still functioning, uh, to, um, to write laws that were seen by many as helping them. They wrote, for instance, the election law and drew the boundaries of the, uh, of the constituencies in such a way that others were not pleased at all with. Uh, they started writing a law uh, about the judiciary, reforming the judiciary, but many thought was intended to uh, make major change to, to, to remove a huge number of, of judges and open the do door for judges from outside the judiciary, lawyers from outside the judiciary to enter and, and alter the, 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 the composition of the judiciary. Um, and this, of course, scared people. Another mistake they made was uh, deciding politically in every step of the way to align with the more conservative, the more uh, uh, fundamentalist uh, political parties instead of aligning themselves with the centrist. Uh, since the election of former President Morsi, at no instance they tried to reach out uh, to, towards the center and, and the, the other political parties. They always built their coalitions with the, with the more conservative elements. Uh, and uh, the president started to respond to increased opposition, the president and his allies, with attacks on his opposition, on the media, on the judiciary, and claiming that this is just inspired by the former regime and counter-revolution, uh, not showing uh, understanding uh, or respect for the demands and the, and the concerns. Uh, this resulted in a, in a groundswell of, of opposition, attempts by, by people inside Egypt, including the head of the military, but also including uh, the European uh, uh, Union through uh, Lady Ashton and uh, uh, Ambassador Bernardino Lyon to find ways to, to, to bring people together uh, failed. And uh, in most cases failed because uh, uh, the Muslim brothers uh, were not willing to, to, cede, to concede ground. They, they wanted to, to, to any ground they managed to, 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 to obtain to keep it. Um, uh, the result was a, uh, a campaign, uh, a campaign that started in a very uh, m m insignificant way by three young uh, uh, gentlemen who decided to launch a campaign to remove the president, to call for early elections, which was not enshrined in the Constitution. Uh, and they designed a, a paper where people would sign and write down their ID number uh, calling for the president to be removed and uh, for a big demonstration uh, on the 30th of June, the first anniversary of, of the uh, sitting of the president. They called themselves rebel in Arabic tamarrud and uh, they started this strange campaign. But uh, to everybody's surprise, it, it, this, the, this petition, the signature of this petition spread uh, phenomenally uh, in the cities first and then in the countryside the kids didn't have to do it themselves those young men but uh, people were downloading it on the internet and printing dozens or even sometimes hundreds of copies and going around towns in traffic lights or, or uh, 
going through neighborhoods and collecting signs. Political parties opened their offices and saying anyone who has signed uh, petition, uh, petition papers, bring them and we will transport them to the head office of the campaign in Cairo. Celebrities or senior politicians signing it publicly in TV programs to encourage. It was a, a, a very interesting phenomenon. But, uh, uh, and then the, 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 the campaign uh, leaders announced the numbers, starting announced we had two or three million, then seven million, 15. And then a couple of days before the 30th of June, they said we already gathered 22 million. Of course, there is no way to, to control the figure. But anecdotally, all of us, all Egyptians, were, knew that virtually everybody was signing it. Everybody was signing it. Uh, uh, as, as the joke goes, even some signed it twice. But, uh, but people were signing it uh, uh, massively. Uh, the real test was, uh, of course, how the June 30th demonstrations would turn out. Um, contacts with the senior uh, Muslim brothers uh, by other politicians in Egypt uh, or foreign uh, leaders um, showed that they did not think it would be a big demonstration. They said it would be a few thousands. Uh, the, the highest number, uh, somebody, someone of them was quoted as saying, said maybe 120, 150,000 will turn out, and they'll go home by 11. Uh, the, the real numbers, I don't know the real numbers, there were all sorts of numbers uh, out, but what I am sure of is that Cairo and the cities and the countryside saw demonstrations that we never saw before, not even in, in the January 2011 revolution, Number, huge numbers. Uh, and that was a surprise to everybody, almost everybody, the, even those who led them, but uh, but also to the, to the Muslim brothers themselves. Uh, but they, their surprise did not result in a reconsideration. Uh, at the time, two parallel developments were happening. Uh, of course, the, before the June 30th demonstrations, there were uh, actions taking place on the ground. Uh, uh, demonstrators in different cities and towns in Egypt were blocking Muslim brothers, uh, officials from entering into their offices in ministries or governorates, and uh, demonstrations and counter demonstrations were forming in uh, many, many places in Cairo and elsewhere, and, and those escalated, escalated to the point that people were starting to uh, attack each other, sometimes uh, in a bloody way, and people were injured, and even people started to get killed. And this was a very worrying, very alarming development. Um, the second uh, parallel process that was taking place were attempts to, to find a way out of this uh, problem uh, by um, foreign uh, uh, partners, but mainly by Egyptian actors trying to mediate, find a way. Uh, the main player uh, uh, was the head of the, uh, of the military, uh, the General Abdel Fattah Sisi. He tried uh, uh, a couple of times privately and a couple of times publicly to help the process find a resolution. First, he made a statement in May saying, we, we, sh we should solve those political problems amicably, and don't please don't ask the, the military inter to intervene. This was, will take us back. So, so because there were those who started calling on the, on the army to, to, to end the problem. Uh, and then he made privately an offer to the president uh, telling him, if you accept a, a, a cabinet reshuffle and a new prime minister and removing the uh, attorney general, I think I can lean on the opposition to accept that as a deal and forget about the idea of early presidential elections. And he did not accept it. He publicly came out and, a week before the 30th of June saying, we have a week, we can use it to find an agreement. But of course, nothing changed. After the 30th, he said, now the people have spoken. I hope that the politicians will get the message. He, I mean the head of the military. And in the next 48 hours, uh, something should happen. Uh, but of course, those next 48 hours were very bloody because uh, the demonstrators, many of them, not, not everybody, but many of them, stayed in the streets and started attacking the uh, offices of the Muslim brothers. And the situation started to get really ugly. And, and, and it spiraled uh, very, uh, very quickly, uh, threatening to, 
to spiral out of, of control. Uh, and when this did not happen, the, the uh, head of the military called for a meeting with the leaders of this youth uh, campaign, uh, with the opposition, and they sent a representative in uh, Dr. Mohammed Baradei, the former head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, who became a, a leading political figure and a, a leading opposition figure. Uh, the head of Al-Azhar, uh, the, the foremost uh, is Islamic institution, and the Pope of Egypt's Coptic Church, and the head of, uh, of the Noor Salafi Party, as well as the head of the Muslim Bro Brothers Party, the, called the uh, Freedom and Justice Party. And the, the, the head of the Muslim Brothers Party did not att attend. Uh, they met, the president uh, proposed the referendum, the attendance uh, on, the, on the president, the attendance refused the idea, and they insisted on the removal of the president, the appointment of the head of the constitutional court, uh, court as interim president, and uh, changing the cabinet, suspending the constitution, and uh, launching a new process of writing the constitution, followed by elections. To reorder the process, start by writing the constitution, uh, followed by uh, elections. The Salafis insisted it will have to be based on the former constitution, and, and that was agreed, and, and that's what was announced. Uh, the Muslim Brothers uh, expectedly rejected all that and, and uh, said that the president was a legitimate president. The president was, was put in, uh, under custody, uh, and, uh, and the, the Muslim Brothers started a sit-in, well, it started uh, a week or so before the 30th of June, in two locations in Cairo, and uh, th those sit-ins started to grow. Uh, and uh, maybe, maybe a little, in a little while, the numbers did not grow uh, that much, but they started to become a source of uh, security concern because the people felt, people saw that they were getting armed and they were uh, constructing walls that, uh, that police started to worry. They might become... Uh, um, they might use this as a center of, uh, of, uh, of well, um, become a security problem, a serious security problem. Uh, there are uh, those ideas of a, a zone that becomes protected and starts getting milita milita militarized uh, until it becomes an, a, a zone that, uh, that is untouchable. That, that's a worry that uh, people in our, our security feared. And, um, and pushed and insisted that the sit-ins should be disbanded. And this is what happened. And uh, when they were disbanded, of course, uh, we all saw uh, that was in the middle of August. It was quite a, a bloody process, but it was bloody on both sides, confirming the fears that uh, those sit-ins became uh, quite, uh, quite dangerous because 50 uh, of the uh, police officers who went to, to participate in the disbandment uh, were killed, and many more were injured. Uh, if we recall that the police of, uh, officer is very well protected, very well trained, and, uh, and, uh, and armed, uh, can, uh, can have those numbers of casualties, it indicates how, uh, how bad the situation was. In any case, uh, uh, in any case, this is where we are now. The country is following this roadmap that was decided the very first day of the removal of uh, former President Morsi, which is writing a constitution and preparing for elections, but at the same time trying to deal with this problem that we thought did not exist, that the Islamist parties led by the Muslim Brothers had, um, had not totally uh, dropped uh, violence as part of the political discourse. Uh, this was something that people observed whenever they demonstrated in the serious demonstrations that are not happening now, but used to happen through, throughout the months of July and, and August. They were armed and, and they fired arms and they killed s some of the police and, and even some of the um, unlucky bystanders. But there were attacks across Egypt. Sinai is a special case, but also in the, in, in, in the cities and, and thousand, towns and villages. 
nobody knows exactly whether those are Muslim brothers themselves or, or their allies, but the whole phenomenon is a worrying phenomenon and made clear that this is one of the two big problems with the, with the Islamist movement that needs to be dealt with. The first, the one I mentioned initially, was that they thought democracy was elections and, uh, and not realizing that uh, being elected only entitles you to run the country for a specific period, not, for, uh, not to, to, to change its nature. Uh, uh, the second is that violence was very close to the surface, was not, the, those who used weapons had weapons and uh, were uh, quite uh, well trained to use them and were willing to use them. One would understand that the Muslim Brothers would be furious and, uh, and their supporters would be furious, but being, uh, being so ready to use, to use violence was something that people thought would come sometime later when, when their elements start to become radicalized with time. But that was not, those were not people who got re radicalized. Those were people who were ready, who, who considered violence one of the elements, one of the tools in the, in the political toolbox. As I said, this started back then in, 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 uh, in November uh, when, when the, the Muslim brothers sent their young to, to just uh, sweep away uh, those who were demonstrating. And there are videos and pictures uh, of, 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 of those attacks, and uh, whether November ones or the more recent ones, that show that there is this problem. Those are the two problems we have to deal with with the, with the Islamists. A, a, a more uh, overriding challenge Egypt has to face is one that uh, one of our scholars encapsulated uh, brilliantly, I think, he said that we can't have democracy without the Islamists in Egypt, uh, or without the Muslim Brothers in particular, but we can't have democracy with them the way they are. So the challenge is how to navigate this very difficult path uh, of making sure that they accept the, the requirements of, of democracy and be part of the process uh, uh, without having them dictate the rules of the process or be ready to force their way into the process. Uh, this, is, this is the big challenge we, we are facing, but at the same time, um, the country is moving along with the political process that is open and they are invited, they have been invited, they keep to be invited to join uh, the process whenever they decide. Of course, uh, the invitation is extended to those who have, who have not been uh, on the record or uh, uh, um, uh, 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 condemned for using violence or in inciting uh, violence, um, but they are invited to, to take part in the process if they decide. But in the meantime, um, there is a commission that is reviewing the Constitution, and, and the indications are, the promises, let's hope uh, they stay true to that promise. They will write a constitution that is up to the modern international standards of the constitution, that has rights and liberties that, that ensure that uh, individual freedoms would be, be, would be protected and, uh, and a, a political system that is fair, that would not uh, be working in uh, someone, uh, someone's favor against the others. Um, and uh, at the same time, we're, we're, the government and with very, very strong backing, I have to tell you, very strong backing, sometimes too strong backing from the public to deal with the violence, to deal with the, the sense of, uh, of insecurity that, is, that people are feeling, not just because of the headlines, but in their suburbs. Uh, and uh, those processions of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of those who, who feel legitimately angry with what happened, but, but be, maybe behaving uh, in, in a way that is not, uh, not give, bringing them a lot of popularity. Uh, and the third, of course, is uh, working on the socioeconomic challenges uh, that Egypt is facing, because uh, without dealing with the people's needs, uh, the country is, is in trouble. Uh, just today, the, the government approved a package of measures uh, that would um, um, increase growth, enhance growth, and uh, also uh, reduce some of the 
burdens on, on the poorer uh, uh, in the society. Uh, um, we'll see, but, but the, my, my final point I would like to make is Egypt's momentum towards democracy cannot be reversed and ca because there is this 65% of the population of the young, the large uh, uh, portion of even um, older people who believe in, in, in democracy and its value, not just an, as an abstract uh, uh, idea but, uh, an, or ideal, but as a very practical means to ensure steady management of, of our country and making it a better country. I think if, if Egypt and, 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 and our partner countries manage to resolve this question of relationship between uh, religion and state in a proper way, uh, even if we do it the hard way, uh, because we didn't have an alternative, if we manage to do it and come out of it, uh, well, I think this would be a great service to the Muslim world and to our peoples and, and, and to the world. It's, it's not going to be easy, uh, but, uh, but I personally remain, uh, remain hopeful. Uh, I think I should stop here having talked too much. Uh,